make my boast in you Lord I will make my boast in you Lord <laughs> I will make my boast in you Lord I will make my boast in you are you the rejoicing of my heart and I will make my boast in you hallelujah I will make my boast in you Lord hallelujah you the rejoicing of my heart oh, oh. Oh, holy, holy is the Lord. Oh, holy is your name. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, almighty God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, holy, holy, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, hallelujah. Gira na man jerema, ire na na man dana mingolo mo zombe beninga na na man de imbe mala na mendo. Jere me neng jere me na mala nera, jere na man dolo bono gombendero. Holy, holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we rejoice ourselves in you, almighty God. Lord, we rejoice ourselves in you, O living God. Hallelujah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. 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 Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts are yielded now before you, responding to the Son of God. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, our God of glory. <laughs> <laughs> Our hearts are yielded now before you, 
responding to the Son of God. Joyful, joyful, Lord, we praise you. Joyfully, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Our God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts are yielded now before you. Responding. <laughs> blessed is your name, Lord. Blessed, blessed is your name, Lord. Blessed is your name. Blessed is your name, Almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will praise you. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Come on, everybody just shout to the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Asaki bato yo roma machi kere bebe ti pa ye breve kita yo do. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Well, you know, it might be hard for some people to say words they don't know what they mean. So, hallelujah means praise you, Lord, or praise you, Yahuwah. Hallelujah means I praise you. And hallelujah means I praise God. Who is Yehoah? Hallelujah. We praise him. So we say, Hallelujah, which is praise the Lord, roughly translated in English. Hallelujah. Who? who? Like who? Who is he? He is who? And that's kind of, that's kind of strange, but it's true. Uh, who in the Hebrew language is he, and he in the Hebrew language is who? So now that you're confused, ah, let's try this. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, God. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Ave. Praise you, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Bene. Praise you, God. We praise, we praise, we praise. We praise. We lift our voice and praise your holy name. <laughs> we lift our voice and praise you, Lord Jesus. Holy is the name. Holy is his name. <laughs> holy is the name. Oh, hallelujah. Holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy is the 
Holy, 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 holy is the holy, 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 holy is the Lord Jesus. Your name, O oh God, is above every name. At the name of Jesus, my knees they bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. At the name of Jesus, nations shall be subdued. Uh, at the name of Jesus, every yoke is broken. Uh, but at the name of Jesus, sickness and disease depart. Uh, 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 hallelujah. At the name of Jesus, every yoke is broken. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, every power, every power must obey me. <laughs> That's pretty radical. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Say, every power must obey me. At the name of Jesus, every power must obey me. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, nations, nations are made disciples. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, nations are made. At the name of Jesus, nations are made disciples. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. In the name of Jesus, every power must obey me. In the name of Jesus, every power must obey me. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Uh, hallelujah. At the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. At the name of Jesus Christ, there are great revivals. The fires of revival burn. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow. Father, we thank you for the anointing. At the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost starts moving. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Woo. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow. At the name of Jesus Christ, my knees I bow before him. Hallelujah. <laughs> At the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you. I magnify the Lord. Come on, exalt his name together. We magnify you, Lord. The mighty God, holy is your name. Holy is your name. As you worship him, 
as you worship him the spirit of prophecy will fall upon you as you worship him a great anointing will begin to take hold of you as you worship him everything about your atmosphere will change <laughs> as you allow these praises of the Holy Ghost to take you into the atmosphere of his presence huh the atmosphere of heaven hallelujah 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 well let me just say this welcome everybody i tell you listen you know that you're standing in the presence of the lord when you have uncontainable joy and if you don't have uncontainable joy yes you can feel bad if you want or you can begin to cry out to god and he'll do he'll do whatever you ask you know it's so simple with the lord <laughs> he's amazing if we desire if we just desire what he wants, he does it. Look, it doesn't get any harder than that. This is very difficult for modern man to understand who fights for everything and works so hard for everything that he has. Too many people are on their deathbed. Too many people in the latter part of their life. It is hard for them to accept that all they needed to do was to desire the things that God has asked of us and that he would then work a miracle. They think, well, it's got to be harder than that. If it was harder than that, none of us would be saved. Because look at it, say, my God's made it so easy, it seems like so few are saved. That's what Jesus said. He says, narrow is the way. Why is it so narrow? Because men want to do it their own way. You can be seated. Why is it so narrow? Because men want to do it their own way. Men want to champion their own ideas, their own causes. Today we pray in Jesus' name that you'll throw yourself upon the altar that God himself built upon Mount Moriah. I tell you right now, if there's anything that I want to be happening is over in the children's ministry right now. You know, as far as I'm concerned, there can be far more in children's ministry than here because as long as I can begin to see the children's hearts shaped and formed to throw it all in and trust in God to not learn according to American Western culture of how you can be the author of your own destiny and by your own arm of flesh and by your own strength get whatever it is that you want it's not so in the kingdom of God the Lord looked for an intercessor he found none so he did the work and then, of course, as soon as you step into his work, then the power of intercession comes. Deborah, you can have your phone on. I don't mind. We're so blessed to have Deborah O oh, with us. Deborah is from South Korea. She has Christ for the nation, South Korea. Last time I was in South Korea, Deborah decided she was going to come follow us around Japan, which was very, I mean, a very remarkable thing for us because. We didn't, you know, though I'd have many minister friends who have been to Japan and, and had, have done some great crusades, Carlos, I mean, Carlos, I'd give you an example. Carlos Anaconda usually has somewhere in third world countries, somewhere between, I don't know, 40, 50,000 now. It used to be more than that in the crusades. I know so many people like that have been in Japan. And of course, when they go to Japan, the meetings, if there's 2,000 people there, you've had one of the biggest meetings of the nation. It's a, it is a free society that is the most unreached people group that I've ever been to. So the Lord sent us there to prophesy over the nation. And, and in fact, we have some people that I really believe are going to be very significant, have very significant impacts in the kingdom of God in Japan. And they want to come and they want to be here in San Diego with us for a while. We're looking for a guest house for them. And of course, it's a family. So, you know, it's husband, wife, and baby. And it's been a little bit challenging to find his house for them. But the Lord has that all taken care of. So we prophesy. We prophesy and we say what the Lord tells us to say. And then sometimes it takes a while for those things to come to pass because God's got to put things in position. 
in, uh, I guess it was 13 years ago when we left Na Naval Trading Center after having that property over there and having Harold Bradison, who people call him Father Charismatic Revival, um, Kim Clement, I mean, the list went on. I just stand here and name names. Say, so, well, you know, you're going to have this property. God's going to give you this property. This is going to make it happen for a dollar. And, you know, all those things that went on. And then 13 years ago, right at 12, 13 years ago, my dear friend brought Rodney Howard Brown prophesied that we would get this property. It, it was already in our heart. And uh, so then, of course, we had already been trying to open up the door to get the property, and the door was closed. But you know what? There's something that happens when you, don't, when you can't be discouraged, when you can't stop. There's something that happens to people who, who can't stop. Huh? <clears throat> I'm so blessed with Deborah. She, she doesn't have anybody going and, and putting her arrangements together. She just lets the Holy Ghost do it, you know? She showed up at midnight, midnight last night not knowing where she was even going to stay. Huh? Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, I'm going to be there. And don't worry about it. I'll get there on my own. I mean, she's like, you know, th th these women, they, just, they, they take a map and they point their finger on a place on a map that the Holy Ghost gives them. And it doesn't matter if it's up somewhere up the, you know, backwards of Cambodia or Thailand. They just show up with a map. They don't need anybody, anybody else. <laughs> they don't even just show up with a map. They just get there and God does things. You know, that's, that's what, listen, this is the, these are the days. I have a missions plan for, for Mecca, Saudi Arabia. I have a missions plan for Tehran, Iran. Huh? I, Ram, at, at Ramadan in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, okay? They're having the big festival, right? Show up, listen to this, show up right on the platform and preach the gospel. Get translated in. Just about time they get to kill you, disappear. <laughs> huh? Now, they get everybody's attention, right? Then everything gets settled back down. You reappear. <laughs> Go and preach the gospel. I guarantee you the receptivity then go to an all-time high on the second appearance. Yeah. Now, I'm, I believe these things. If you don't believe them, you can't, you're not going to do it. Don't worry about it. You want to do it. Huh? But according to your faith, Jesus, there's many times, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm doing a book on the miracles, the signs and wonders in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus disappeared many times. He did. He disappeared many times. He slipped through their hands. When people got a hold of you, they got a hold of you, and they're going to take you to the brow of the cliff and throw you off. And it's a bunch of radical Orthodox Jews. They know how to grab. And they bite, too. Okay? They got you. They got you. They're not letting you go. I tell you. You know, you read about Stephen, they, that, they bit him. Okay? It's just the way the, just the, way the family is. You get real emotional about things. <laughs> and then you slip through their hands, that means you disappeared. Okay? We believe in God for great signs and wonders and miracles and, and the nations of the earth. We just been at the Mission Training Center. And the uh, Lord has blessed us. He's blessed the works of our hands with so many things to say there and what God is doing and the amazing connections that the Lord has given us all over the earth. <clears throat> it's like the Lord just says, yeah, I'll give you an opportunity. I, you know, we're so blessed to be connected with Deborah. I mean, we just, it, you know, it's just amazing. God does those things. The Holy Ghost does it. You don't, you don't have to convince anybody. Nobody sat around and talked about it and said, what if? It's just like, hey, you. Be together in this thing. And um, you know what, what Deborah's doing right now with Christ for the Nations Korea? I mean, what God's going to do with that? I'm, I'm so excited about it. She's going to talk about it tonight. I'm trying to, she's going to minister some tonight on what's going on in, in Asia and what the Lord's doing with her and the missions for, uh, that she's doing for Christ for the Nations Korea. And then I'm trying to talk her into come and just stay in one extra for a little bit of extra time and be a uh, school of missions on Tuesday night. Yeah. So, yeah. You want to live big? Then live in Jesus. You want to live small? You want to live so small that nobody even know you ever existed? Huh? Your grandchildren, or you'll be a vague thought in your grandchildren's mind. Then live for yourself. Huh? You want to live a small, insignificant, meaningless life that no one had a, 
Pat had a dream for you to have, except for you, huh? Then live for yourself. Otherwise, come on over here. Father's opened up the door. It says, unlimited possibilities. What would you like to do? All you have to do is put your trust in me. I'm going to, I'm going to minister some radical things this morning. Of course, I can't minister any other way. It's a particular anointing God gave me. If you'd like to hear some other message that's not quite as radical, you, I don't know where you'd go. I'm sure, you know, any place, but I'm going to be radical. It's just all there is to it. People, people want you to be different. I can't, what, what do you mean? I want you to be different. I'm going to be what God made me to be. I want, huh? The Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says you can't take any tool or instrument of man and shape my altar with it. Otherwise, you know, I'm not taking no sacrifice off of that. And the Lord called us to live as a, you know, just to be this living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. Hallelujah. You know, the offering that is holy and acceptable to him, that's what gets the fire. That's where God's fire comes. And God's fire comes for the same single purpose of causing you and I to live in the expressions of the overwhelming glory of heaven, his presence. If you talk about the fires come to burn out this and burn out that, no, no, no. Fire didn't come to burn out this and burn out that. When you look at the Old Testament beginning in the very beginning, the fire came on the offering that God accepted beginning with Abel. Hallelujah. It came for the sole purpose of, inter of being that which interacts with him. Hallelujah. Of being that which is qualified by him. When we begin to minister the way that the Lord has called us to minister, people are greatly offended. And the reason they're greatly offended is because God's told us to minister on complete abandonment of your life. People are offended by that. But Jesus looked at us and said, if you want to come after me, then you must take up your cross and follow me. And I want to talk to you about the cross that Jesus was referring to. Because people just want to personify it just within the sacrifice and the offering. It culminated in that. But it was all about doing the will of the Father very specifically. Because I look at people all the time. They don't know how to appropriate denying themselves, taking up their cross and following Jesus. But we, if we want to understand, then we've got to look at our model. What it was he did. He said, I did and I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of the Father that sent me. He was given over completely to walking in a relationship with the Father where he said nothing except Papa said so. He did nothing except he seen Father do it. And he learned perfect obedience. Now, people, let me tell you, that's, that's challenging for folks, learning perfect obedience, because that means you're going to be corrected all the time. And, and huh, like, listen to me. That means there's going to be major changes in our lives, and people get exhausted. with. I, I can't ever do anything right. Yeah, you can. Walk in the Holy Ghost. You do it all right. But, huh? Jesus said nothing of himself. People want the same anointing. They want the same glory, but they're not willing to have the same consecration and the same commitment. Okay, are you with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Don't, I don't, this, don't get all upset with yourself. Don't get all into yourself because that is a prison. Release. Get released. Let the fire fall. Be consumed with God. Be consumed with His Word. Be consumed with His Spirit. Be consumed with His presence. That's the fire of God. You know, I'm telling you right now, if you want to grow and be strong in God, then you're going to have to be committed to being in every church meeting you can be in. You're going to have to be commi committed to being in, 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 in engaging in relationship with the Lord every day in His Word, in prayer. Not, I'm not talking about some religious exercise. I'm talking about a hunger and a thirst. I'm talking about a desire in your heart. A desire. God, I desire to do Your will. Jesus said, concerning Jesus, Hebrews 8, 13, um, 10, 13. Behold, it is written of me, I come in the volume of the book. In other words, if you take the whole book and you summarize it into one sentence, that's the volume of the book. Are you with me? Does everybody, is everybody, is everybody, do you have Bibles? Maybe you have photographic memories and you can actually see the scripture in front of you. That's fine. 
But I still think it's a good witness to open up your Bible. Just, I want you to know that under, people say, people think that I, people think I, I start carrying my Bible around with me. People think I'm just making this up as I go. I'm quoting scripture. I'm quoting the word of God. I'm crying out to you. People, unless we participate with God, the Holy Ghost, nothing's going to happen. God, people want, people want God to work with them based upon their turn, their own terms. He's not going to work with us based upon our own terms. He wants to break off everything that would hold us back from cooperate with him and participate participating with him you know go and look at religious people sitting in the church they got this weird look on their face and they're not they don't know how to flow they don't know how to move with god because they huh they want god to they want god to do things based upon their own terms just surrender to the lord start participating with him and as you participate with the holy spirit what you're going to begin to do is you're going to begin to understand what's going on in heaven and that's, that's where the life really begins. So are you looking with me in Hebrews 10, 7? Huh? She said, I've come, I've come in the volume of the book. The totality of the book. To do thy will, O God. See that? See that? Everybody see that? To do thy will, O God. Okay, let's get this down, right? Okay, let's get this, let's get this right. The Lord redeemed you, saved you. God came, found you, sought you out for one single purpose so that you could do his will, to do the will of the Father. So that you, in other words, could be able to participate with what's going on in heaven. Does that make sense to you? So that you don't have to live a terrible, ugly life. Somebody hears, oh, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Oh, that's got to be terrible, ugly life. Oh, that's got to be hard and difficult. No, it's not terrible, ugly life. No, it's not hard and difficult. It's not hard and difficult. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My servitude is easy. And my burden is light. What you do in, in yourself, that's hard and difficult. Huh? So he said, oh, no, how can I do this? All you got to do is desire this. And you got to let patience have her perfect work. Because she's going to make sure that every one of your motives are tried. Huh? She's going to make sure every one of my patience, going to make sure every one of my motives are right that I'm walking in that way and that disposition that belongs to Father because He's not going to train me wrong. He's not going to train you wrong. Yeah, you can get a little bit of an anointing. You can have a little bit of anointing. You can have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm not talking about a little of this and a little of that. I'm talking about being able to function in those ministries that Jesus has now imparted in the church that He modeled for us and said, you can do this and you can do greater than this. Amen. That's the light. Huh? Look at the world, man. Look at the world. See, the occult is on the rise right now. It's been on the rise. Why? Because all the world worships Satan. Did you know that? There's going to be a, there's going to, like in North Korea, North Korea became a cult nation. Okay? Where Kim Sung il took out the name of Jesus out of hymns and put his name in it. There's nothing new. Nothing new. And ultimately, it's going to come to a place where Satan will be worshipped in the earth. Revelation chapter 12, it's the eighth kingdom. We call it the beast kingdom. People talk about 666. Nobody knows what that is. There's one verse of scripture on it. We don't have anything, to, we don't know anything about it. But we do know that, that the nations of the earth will come and worship him. They'll take their, his mark to worship him. Satanic realm. And we watch the rise of that occult. We watch because, of, you know, people are making it popular through movies with every different kinds of title. I don't even want to go through the names. Where people that look at various different kinds of witchcraft and sorcery and they all... You know, they all captivated by it. Hey, the Lord's called us into a great power and authority over all the works of Satan to shut them down. And it's like, it's like God's people somehow look and gaze for a moment on this great glory. Maybe it's like the days of Moses when God came down upon the mountain. And Israel stood there and they gazed upon that glory and they said, this is too much for us. They started backing away. It's too much for us. Start backing away. So I, I'm, I'm going to go get a job. I'm going to go do whatever. Start backing away. Moses, you go talk to God. We can't even bear to hear him. We look upon the glory and we start backing away. Or we look upon the glory and maybe we just feel like we're just stuck. We right now are looking upon the glory of the only begotten Son of God, Christ Jesus, who's come with an unmeasurable, unlimited realm of everything that God himself possesses 
and now has made it available to us, showing us these things by the working of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit has come to take everything that belongs to Jesus and reveal it, show it, transmit it, disclose it to us. I mean, it's more than a hallelujah. It really is. It's more than a, it's like, yes, oh God, I want to grab all of this. I want, I want this in my life. I want, let, let, God, let God take the desire a little bit deeper because if you'll let God, listen, people think they got to work for this. You don't have to work for this. All you got to do is desire these things. And Jesus said, desire more than anything else. He says, if the kingdom of God is more important to you than anything else, then you can have it. And he's fact, the fact of it is, he said this. He said, you want the kingdom of God and his righteousness to be more important to you than anything else in this life. And of course, we say it like this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. No, let me get it down to the layman's language. The kingdom of God and his righteousness must be more important to you than anything else. And then you can have all of this. Can I say it again? Should I say it again? Should, 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 all of what? Subduing nations. Because Jesus told us to go and make disciples out of every nation. This nation used to be a disciple, and I'm telling you right now, we're calling it back. We're calling for a revival, for it to come back. That's an amen. For, that's an amen for sure. That's a total I agree. We're going to do this. Hallelujah. I watch people constantly in the nation of America be offended by the message that Jesus Christ preached. Because Jesus Christ preaches a message of total abandonment. It's been taken and misunderstood from one extreme to the other extreme. Back in the time where people would just, they would just go up into a cave and live and, uh, you know, in, in to a total uh, life of, of self-denial through their own concepts and through their own ideas. Jesus is not talking about any of that nonsense. To all the way to the extreme of, oh, we can just live whatever life we're going to live and God's just going to use us. If he should so choose, just go about your everyday business and do whatever it is you want to do and, and God will have his way with you. Nonsense. From one extreme to the other extreme. The Lord says, I want to bring you over here. I want to cast a vision for you. Okay? Here's God Almighty casting a vision for you and me. And then he's giving us an opportunity to desire it. Are you with me? And then to desire it more than anything else. And then, yeah, if you start looking at your own skill set and your own ability, you're going to get all faint of heart and discouraged. You're going to go, wow, my goodness, God's told me to act like him and look at me. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're never going to get anywhere trying to make it happen for yourself. You, when, you're in your, when you're in a moment of discouragement, I'm telling you right now, Satan will create discouragement. I'm going to tell you right now, that's one of his chief weapons against God's saints is discouragement. When you're overwhelmed, your heart's overwhelmed, you're going to say, look, wait, I want to see Jesus. Lord Jesus, well, I'm just going to worship you. You paid it all for me. All, not some. You didn't say, you, we didn't say, you paid some for me. Having begun in the Spirit... Having received a miracle transformation of life, are you now perfected by your own works and skills and ability and insight and labor and effort? No. <laughs> All I got to do is let this desire that God's placed in our heart begin to become an all-consuming desire. To where it's, I will to do you will, Father. That's all I want to do. And you don't have to say, oh, I'm looking for the will of God for my life. You don't have to do that. That's nonsense. Jesus modeled the will of the Father. He modeled it specifically, purposefully, generally. He said, come follow me, come do it this way. So I want you to open your Bibles here now to, um, to Mark chapter 8. Hear those pages. Are you there? Mark chapter eight, is everybody there? I'm getting there. For me the the atmosphere feels really good. The air feels really good. Very good. Full of peace, full of joy, 
full of goodness, full of God's love, full of God's call. I hear his voice. Pete, when I feel this peace, I hear his voice calling. All I got to do is, in this journey with the Lord, is beginning to start talking about him. And the man of his manifest presence that we get to enjoy just intensifies. Hallelujah. We want that for every one of you. Father wants that for you. Now you just got to desire it and quit beating yourself up and claiming these things about, bad about yourself and just start worshiping God. Instead of, instead of being so all wrapped up in yourself of what you're doing and what you're not doing, why don't you just start worshiping Jesus? Why don't you just start saying, Father, I want to do it just like you. I've got to do it like you. God, this way it, start, this way it starts, starts. Lord, I think you're wonderful. I want to be around you. And then it starts getting to the point of, oh, God, I've got to have everything that you, huh? I gotta have everything that you want me to have. I want I want it more than anything else. And then it gets to the point like some of the great revivalists of the past said, Give me my nation or I'll die. Huh? Give me Scotland or I'll die, said John Knox. Huh? I wonder how many people feel like that about America. I know Deborah has a company of people around her. They feel that way about Korea. For them, it's not south and north. It's Korea. The Holy Ghost people of God. Hallelujah. Huh. Now, nah, many people feel that way about America. Because when you do, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, what happens is we start looking at our own resources, what we can do. We're not willing to walk one step at a time with God. And no, step out into the miraculous. Step out into the exhausting. Step out into the where it's risking everything. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I love watching women of faith move and men of faith move. Huh? I love it. I love it. Huh? Deborah said to me, she said this morning, she said, all I knew is I needed to be in San Diego for Sunday morning service. <laughs> huh? Didn't know how I was going to get there. Didn't know where I was going to stay. None of that even mattered. She just knew she was going to be in the meeting. She was going to be in the meeting Sunday morning. Look, I'm telling you, when you step out there, Papa's going to change. You're going to begin to engage things that... Be, Otherwise, it's just going to be a fantasy. It's just going to be fantasy. Oh, well, it's just make believe. I mean, that's Bible days. And then they, people act like people act like that the the first church was a different kind of church. That the Bible days are different than these days. That God has somehow changed. No, 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 no. The same church, same days. And just people are going astray. That's why Jesus said, "Will there be any faith when the Son of Man returns? Will there be any faith upon the earth when the Son of Man returns?" Yeah, well, if God's people in this place will rise up. I mean, I was so blessed by one of the quotes I heard from Daniel ministering on Wednesday night. I have one purpose to live that my, cult, that my generation may encounter the kingdom of God, may encounter the glory of, of God, may encounter heaven, may encounter Jesus, may encounter the Holy Ghost. Well, that's the will of the Father. And that's going to cost you to do that. And you're going to have to change. So you might as well go ahead and get used to it. You're going to have to grow and mature. Everything about your life is going to be redefined for you. And you're going to just have to get accustomed to that. And that's going to have to be something that you are happy with. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with being conformed in every way to the image of Jesus Christ. No matter what it costs, even my life. I'm just going to get comfortable with that. You get comfortable with this, you're going to have a good time. You're going to grow. You're going to mature. You're going to find yourself signs of wonders, fire of God, glory of heaven, manifest Jesus, songs of God being manifested in the earth with every dimension of the supernatural working power of God. You know, I talked to the Lord about some of the things that we've been able to do in other countries of the world. What we were doing was we were minding our own business, doing what God told us to do, hungering and thirsting after the things of the kingdom, and hear the word of the Lord say, go now, do this. Get there and a the nation has changed. Thousands upon thousands and thousands of Hindus come rushing into the kingdom. And the Lord say, oh, no, 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 that's just warm up. I'm just letting you see a little bit more. Do a little bit more. Just wait. Joshua and I was talking about how big the Crusades are going to be in China. Hallelujah. You know why the Crusades are going to be so huge in China? Because the church is changing China from within. The church. 
the church is burning with the fire of divine glory right now. Such, such masses of people are coming into the kingdom every day in China. An estimated 30,000 a day. Joshua and I, I were talking about how big the, how big the crusades are going to be. Tens of millions of people. Ah, we're going to have miracle. Tens of millions of people. You got 1.3 billion people. You're going to have to have big crusades to get everybody. Huh? You, if, you're gonna, if it's going to be a quick work, he's going to do his quick work. And Father's looking for the, who he's looking for those who are willing to be completely conformed, to say, look, I'm following Jesus. What did Jesus do? Behold, the volume of the book is written to me. I've come to do thy will, O God. This is it. I've come to live for you, to live big for you, to do it just like you do it, God, Father, just to do it just like you do it. What's ever going on in your heart to express that, whatever you're saying is coming out of your mouth, that's what I say. Whatever, you, whatever it is, to whatever work you're doing, that's what I do. People, that's a, that is a consecration to an entirely different life, a complete change and redefinition and redefining of everything. And that don't happen by accident. That's purposeful. That, 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 is, that, is, that is a cross. It's one that you can love because the glory of Papa's in it. The glory of the Father. Huh. This is G Jesus. Before I read, before, just before I read Mark, let me, I know you already turned there. You went through the labor of turning there. You can hold your finger on it. Hebrews chapter 12. I just I like to talk about what Jesus did. Looking unto Jesus, verse 2, chapter 12. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. But I tell you, this present suffering is not worthy to be compared to the glory that's about to be revealed. Present suffering. Despising yeah. <laughs> the shame. And is now yeah. set down the right hand of the majesty on high, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha -ha. And he must reign. He must reign. He must reign. He went and sat down. The heavens must receive him until the restu restitution, restoration of all things. He, he sat down after having purchased our salvation, having redeemed us, having brought forth the church. He sat down on the right hand of the Father, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool because he sent forth his church to go everywhere, conquering with divine power and authority, making disciples out of nations, showing forth his glory with subduing power over every work of Satan to cast out every unclean spirit, to trample underfoot every power of the enemy. That's what Jesus gave to those who would follow him. I give you power to tread upon serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing can by any means touch you. Hallelujah. As he said to the church at Rome, I know God will crush Satan under your feet shortly. It's total abandonment, people. <laughs> I mean, you know how many times I wanted to get up and, and leave San Diego? And how many people have come along to me and said, you know what? You don't have to pastor. You've got these other things God would have you do. Because what happens is when we, sometimes what, we, what we'll do is we'll look for an easy way out. And we can all justify everything in our mind. You know that thief? He stole that money and he justified it. He said this. He said, they owed it to me. I didn't know me. <laughs> Everybody could justify anything and everything in their mind. Huh? We you and I going to have to come and understand that God has taught us. It wants to teach us to live by the word, word only. He said, I'm going through a desert. You know why you're going through a desert? Because you're hard of learning. Why did he take them through the desert? Deuteronomy chapter 8. So they may learn that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, what will that result in? Look at what Jesus said. Look at what Jesus did. This is what it will result in. Power to overcome Satan. 
because Satan is there tempting him, saying, if you say you are who you say you are, that's what the devil's always saying about those who are anointed of God. If you are who you say you are, then you command these stones that they may, they may be made into bread. Satan wanting us somehow to come under the suggestion of his word, of his influence, of his direction. And I'm telling you right now, he comes a whole lot more subtly than that. Huh? And when you break the stronghold of the subtle by the obedience, it will come even more personified and more radical. And Jesus, what did Jesus say? I only do what Papa says. I, I'm, I don't have to sort this out. I don't have to wonder if this is right or wrong. If this is something I should do or shouldn't do. I only do what Father says to do. Now you get to start understanding how to inherit the promises. To do it Father's way. If your eyes could be open, and I'm telling you, if there's anything that I'm praying more than anything else, is that the people that are in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ here in the United States of America, their eyes will be open so that they can see the reality of the spiritual world that is at work around them, that there's far more consequences and things at stake than their job, their home, their personal welfare and interest. That there is a war afoot a right now, that there's a battle raging over the souls of men and over the nations of this earth. And Christ Jesus interceding, Holy Ghost interceding, Father's heart and compassion, willing, crying out, will someone go for me? It seems that so many are lullabied to sleep with the love of ease. To where that very few people who believe in the power, signs and wonders and miracles were willing to even go to the nations. And suddenly God began to raise up. <laughs> in the nations themselves by personal visitation of Jesus Christ and by other great encounters. Men of signs, wonders, and miracles. Women of signs, wonders, and miracles. God has given us the power of complete change. That's what it means to be reconciled. Reconciliation, karalege, is the Greek word that's used there. It's change. And the change he's given to us is a change from our life to his life. It's instantaneous. It's a miracle. It's a provision. But now you must participate with it and be trained and learn through obedience. Even as a captain of our salvation learned obedience. People want to know, I believe it like this. No, I think it like this. No, I want it like this. No, it's supposed to be like this. Oh, I disagree or I agree. Forget about all of that. How about learning to live by the word of God alone? How about saying, okay, Father, I'm going to get it real simple. I'm going to get real basic here with you. I know what you said to do. Now turn to Mark. Chapter 8, go back to Mark. I'm, hopefully you get a quick, quick reference to that. <laughs> you know, we always want to be in the company of the successful and famous. You know that. We don't want to be around somebody that's going to get rejected. We don't want to be around some small thing. We'll be around something that, that doesn't look all exciting. Okay, so here's Jesus. Okay, are you with me? Okay. Jesus is telling them in... in uh, Verse 30, begin about verse 31, he's saying, I'm going to be rejected. The priests, the leaders, they're not going to accept me. They're going to despise me and they're going to put me to death. And Peter's going, no way, man. We're going to rule and reign around here. What are you talking about? You can't stop saying that. Look, this is, this is going nowhere but to the top. We on the move here. You're talking about rejected, despised, going to die. Give me a break. He's holding on to that which men like to think, which men like to be a part of, which men like to believe. We preserve our own lives. We'll fight for our lives. We'll fight. We'll fight to the death for like, you know, one more advancement in the queue on I-5. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? I just drove back. Down the I-5, other people are out there, man. They are about for blood to get one more up on another car. 
self-interest and self-preservation and me and mine and what I feel and what I think has to be broken. God has poured out the spirit of humility and justice and mercy upon us so that he can be. Otherwise, we never would be able to have a chance. The pride that took hold of Satan and possessed his identity. The pride then that fell upon Adam and Eve and the descendants and possessed their identity would possess you in a prison for the rest of your life and you would have religious ideas and religious concepts and religious motivations, but you'll never have anything that looks like heaven. You'll never have power to say to Satan, go to the mentally insane. And they completely set free. <laughs> to the dead, rise and walk. <laughs> to a nation, bow your knee before Jesus. Now I set you free from your prison. When Carlos Anacondia came on the scene and started going, listen to me, Satan. Of course, he said in Spanish. And he said it so radically. And many of you sitting here have heard him. Let's go to me, Satan. I destroy your work. I destroy your power. You must obey me now. And whole cities and towns and regions were liberated because a strong man was spoiled. I mean, a strong man was bound and the house was spoiled. I said, I'm going to get in close with that. That's what I said. I'm going to get in close with that. And, and, and I, I didn't have to invite myself. I got invited. He said, Carlos said, you want to go with me? Come follow me around. One day, Carlos told me, he said, I want you to start going and doing crusades. I'm going to set crusades up for you. I want you to start going and do them. I'm going to release you into my ministry to go and do them. And I was excited about it, but as soon as he said it, the Lord said, no, you're not. I was excited. I was smiling on my face going, I'm ready. And the other guy goes, you're not going. <laughs> men will have great ideas for us. they mighty men of God who do mighty things that, yes, the Lord wanted me to connect with him and the Lord wanted me to hold on to his coattail and he's still a father figure to me to this day and I love him by my heart. And his, va and his friendship is extremely important to me. But, I have to follow Jesus. Huh? You have to follow Jesus. And then people can't tell me that they're following Jesus when they retreat to their jobs and to their own success, and to their own interest, and to their own business, and to their own, you know, come on, self-interest. You can go and follow Jesus by laying down your life somewhere in the preaching of the gospel and the reaching of the lost. Amen. Amen. Well, understand, you must follow him. But you can't tell me you're following Jesus when you're not doing what it is. He did. And what he's called us now to do. And I'm telling you, there's a price to pay. It's a price to pay. I told my wife this morning again, I said, honey, we were worn out last night. We spent about somewhere between 30 and 42 hours, 30 and 42 hours on driving just as, since Monday. I said, baby, I cannot afford to get old and say, I could have done more. I'm going to lay this foundation. I'm going to lay this foundation. If I get to build the house, amen, I'm going to lay this foundation. And when I give up the ghost, I'm going to say, receive my spirit, oh God. I'm going to say, I fought the fight. I've kept the faith, Father. I, I poured out myself as an offering upon your altar. And I want you to do the same. I'm preaching to you this way because I want you to do the same. And if God's people will begin to respond and begin to do the same, to begin to do it, I pray more passionately than I've ever done it. What's going to happen is this nation will have revival and the nations of the earth will be changed in short order. In short order. In short order. In short order. Jesus could have transformed all the nations of the earth in three years. He could have. But he was sent only to one nation. One, Israel. To go to his house. To declare to the descendants of Abraham, I'm here. And I'm the light of the Gentiles and the Savior for all peoples of the earth. Lay his life down at Calvary's cross. Then to raise up his church, who is the personification of himself in the earth, and send us. Hallelujah. We took up an offering the other night here for North Korea. Some of the people, at least one of the, some of the people, I'm going to say it that way. Because we're on YouTube. That were here in that meeting are right now in North Korea. Right at this moment in North Korea. 
North Korea is going to be changed by who? Nations struggling with each other? Lobbying for position? Fiery Holy Ghost Church crying out to God. Desiring to do thy will. It is written in me. I desire to do thy will, God. And it's more than just walking around. Oh, I desire. It's get yourself moving. Huh? Because I could be sitting in a room somewhere desiring to do God's will. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get up, start preaching. Get up, start moving. Get up, start following Jesus Christ. Somebody said, oh, pastor, you just want us all to be so busy. No, I don't. I want you to all follow Jesus Christ. Go do these works. He said, if you're saying to me uh, and before this adulterous, sinful world, I will be ashamed of you before my father and the holy angels. I'm not running that risk. Neither do I want to manifest some flesh as I stand stammering before men and don't know how to represent the kingdom of God. I'm not going to come with the speech of which men's wisdom can, can produce and in intellect. But by the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost, we've got to go that way. There's a price to pay to have that. As soon as you pay the price, you'll have it. Huh? Let me tell you what the price is. To be willing and obedient because <laughs> there's a lot of people willing oh I desire to do thy will I'm willing but they're not obedient they're not willing to go now step out and go do it step out but what happens if I lay hands on people and they don't get healed well what happens if you lay hands on people and they do get healed when I first started in the ministry and of course I was my dad's a minister I was raised in the ministry and uh, I would lay hands on some people but nothing nothing happened I would just say to for some people, you healed. Just that was it. You're healed. And they'd be completely healed of incurable diseases. It was just, it, it's not, it's, his father does the work. He's, just, he's allowed to try us. Circumstances would try us. Now all of a sudden we lay hands on somebody and they don't get healed. What are we going to do? Start feeling like, you know, I don't got the goods. We start thinking about ourselves. It has nothing to do with you. Whether it works or doesn't work, it has nothing to do with you. And the first thing Father wants to show you is it doesn't have nothing to do with you. It belongs to Him. Holy Ghost does what He wants to do. And He does it based upon our willingness to be obedient, be faithful. Because if you're willing, if you're obedient, faithful, if you're willing, obedient, you shall <laughs> eat the fruit of the land. And what are we talking about? The inheritance. Well, what inheritance do you want? Do you want inheritance of vines and, you know, grape vines and fig trees and houses and wells and cattle? Or do you want the inheritance of Jesus Christ to sit and reign with him in a heavenly realm right now, today, being with him in a heavenly realm and throughout all eternity, finding ourselves in the most wonderful place? You can't even imagine it. Satan is so run, uh, Satan is so run a camouflage and interference, a smoke screen against the good things of God, people think that living their own life is far more beautiful than living the life that God shaped us in His image and His likeness for when He shaped Adam in the garden in His image and His likeness, that, that, that He shaped us for when He recreated us anew in righteousness and true holiness when we were born of the Spirit. Oh, but yet they still try to go find joy. They still try to go find peace. They still try to go find the goodness of the things of God. Hallelujah. Huh? They do, even though they're looking for it in places where they never, it's just temporal. It's just, it's an imaginary. It's an illusion. It's a flashing pan. Huh? You thought you were going to be happy. You were happy for just a little bit, and then it was gone. That's a flash in a pan. That was an illusion. It looked happy, but you said quickly. It left you sad. Dissatisfied, unhappy, miserable, didn't do nothing for you, cannot satisfy, labor not for the meat that cannot satisfy, that perishes, huh? but for that which endures unto every eternity. Oh, my God. I pray right now. I'm, I'm, I'm just crying out to God. I'm crying out to God. Father, let the influences of those that are over there ministering to the children right now let them not shape them for some academic success, some personal gain, but let them be shaped to go offer themselves upon a sacrifice, an altar somewhere for the kingdom of the living God. So that, why? So that it's something to be a martyr? No. Because in such an act, the power of God's divine glory will be revealed and the deception and the blindness of heart and mind that are on people will be removed and the signs and wonders and miracles of a living God would be being, 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 being made men best. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I was talking to Phil the other day. I, I believe that Phil has built the, the greatest, most cutting-edge missions that has ever been built since Livingston. And it wasn't too long ago. It was a 10 years, well, a little longer than that. And Phil was just running around, just long-haired, you know, hippie-looking guy with his guitar, with an anointing to sing and worship. But he said, he's got passion. I've got to do more. I've got to do more. And one day he comes to me and he, and he, he tore his tendons and his ligaments and his arms, cutting trees and pulling the trees. He had a bunch of other people around working in Zambia, Africa, building, building the cafeteria to house, the, house the, the missionaries that were going to come be raised up. And there, were very, there, wasn't hard, there wasn't really anybody around. Now the place is full. Now Angola. No one else can get in Angola. Phil's got Angola. They'd given him land in Angola. He just had two kings and all the grand chiefs. And I mean, just God had just opened up every door just overnight. I mean, it took, I said, Phil, how long has it been? How long? He was telling me, man, you should have been there. He's going on talking about how wonderful it was. I said, Phil, how long was it getting here? I'm just talking about the start of the labor, just start of the labor. Seven years, seven years to get here. We're finally here. We get trying to get an angle. God's opened up doors that has never been opened before in the, in the, in the Amazon. But, 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 but what happened? What had to happen? Somebody had to desire. Somebody had to desire. There had to be this desire. God, use me to do your will. I want to do it like you described it to do it. And then, not just willing, but obedient, said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get up and take the risk. When Phil said, when Phil said, when Phil's ligaments and, 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 and tendons were so sore, he couldn't even, bend, couldn't even bend his arms. <laughs> I said, I'm sending my tractor to you right now. I'm going to be a part of that. I'm going to find a way to be a part of it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of that. I see what you do. I'm, I'm, I'm in that. I'm in that. I'm not letting you do that no more. Here, here's what we're going to do. Now I'm, now I'm participating. Now I'm in. Now I'm going to sacrifice too. Oh, well, I can say, well, I need it over here. Uh, I'm going to be over there with you. Well, I can do it. I, I'll, I'll drag it around with my arms for a while like you did. And you take my tractor and I'll drag it around with my arms. Kind of thing, you know? Are you with me? See, do you hear, do you hear something? Do you hear a desire that's more than just, you know, uh, you know I kind of like to desire? Oh, I kind of like to have a vacation in, in Manila. I mean, what? That, not that kind of desire, an all-consuming passion. It will not let you go. That you, it causes you to get up out of your seat. Huh? Reinhard Bonnke said that there's one thing that God cannot do. There's one thing God cannot do. Move you off your couch. All the rest, all everything else he can do. One thing he cannot do, he cannot move you off your couch. He will not violate your will. But when you get up and you start moving, watch out. Who is Reinhardt? Reinhardt came out of a little country church in eastern Germany. Just a few folks there. Holy Ghost, radical, you know, come on, holy rollers swinging from the chandelier, <laughs> Pentecostal assembly of God. You know, that's it, this little church. But the wind of heaven began to blow in his life, the fire of God. I'm telling you right now, Benjamin, you get ready because the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you start preparing sermons, start preaching. You can get, you can get moving, buddy. You can get over your fear. Huh? You're not fearful in any other thing, so you're not going to be fearful here either. You're going to stand up. You're going to be who you got, who's God called you to be. Huh? So you don't have a choice. <laughs> Some people just, you know, God will let you, God will let you just, huh? God will let you. I was, I was having to deal with a cow the other day. Let me tell you about my cow. Can I tell you about my cow? I'm dealing with a cow. I was waiting for that cow. I had to give her a vaccine. I had to give her shots. And she's so fat, she could hardly get in the squeeze. And so I can just be patient. I was just patient, letting her move through. And finally, it's just like, okay, we got work to do. I've been patient long enough. And so I gave her no choice. I went there and I got her. She might weigh 1,800 pounds and I weigh what I weigh. <laughs> but there's just, there's no way that she could deny will, the will of a man. You know what I'm saying? There's no way we can deny the will of the Father. Huh? 
There's, there's some point in time that's just like, okay, I've been patient. Now I'm, all, I'm, I'm pulling you out of that thing. I had to back her out, actually. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, dear people, you sit around here. Just stay here. Just stay here with the desire. Just stay here with the desire. If you don't look desirable enough, if you don't look like you, the desire is deep enough, I'm going to come to you and say, I don't think your desire is deep enough. And you get upset, but as long as you stay, <laughs> you're going you to get somewhere, I'll tell you right now. You may stay a long time upset and sad and sorrowful looking and, you know, just nobody else understands. You know what? Nobody understands anyone. So you are in good company when you think nobody just really understands. That's what, that's what everybody thinks. We want to just get into a, like a, a, you know, a group session and, 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 you know, express to one another their interest and their concerns about how nobody understands. But that ain't going to do anything. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. All of a sudden, you just have a desire change. A deeper desire. I'm going to do this thing. I'm tired of sitting around here. How is it going to work? It's impossible. How, can, how is it going to, how's it going to work? The Lord's not going to let you know. He's going to say, just take one step and do, your, do what I told you to do. Well, I don't see how this one step is going to make a big difference here. This is a seven billion people world here. Huh? Seven million people world. Just take one step. Good. Now take the next step. Very good. But it just doesn't look, it doesn't look like we're going to get anything. Just take the next step. Now, we want to try to know the beginning from the end. Father's not allowing you to play in that territory. That belongs to him and him alone. He's the only one who's the beginning and the end. He's the one who knows the beginning from the end. And you get to know one step at a time. Because Father's going to have perfect obedience. He's going to teach us how to trust him. He's not going to share his glory in the sense that we're taking the glory in ourselves. He's going to give us his glory. Hallelujah. Allow us to sit down with him in his throne so long as we trust him. Just just love him. He wants purity. Purity. He wants purity. He wants truth. He don't want any make-believe. Make Somebody said, what do I do, Pastor? What do I do? Just desire these things. With everything that you know, Father will do the rest. Just be faithful with what Father has given you to do in the kingdom right now. Do not stop. And he will prepare you to do more. Don't try to go ahead of yourself. Don't try to go ahead of what God's doing. He'll prepare you unto every good work. Now I'm going to read this verse of Scripture here. I tell you right now in the name of Jesus, change comes. You cannot afford the, run, the risk of living out your entire life going round and round, grinding meal for the Philistines, hair cut off, eyes plucked out, getting up every morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, going to work, coming home, exhausted. Every once in a while, making it to church. A little shout, a little hallelujah, a little amen. A little praise God. A little Holy Ghost shuffle or something. <laughs> Will Father still love you? Yes, he will still love you. Will he show you his goodness? Yes, he will. But you won't be much use. And right now, we need some people. We need some people that are going to be useful in the kingdom. I, I, I tell you, it, it just bothers me. Everybody's standing around praising themselves and, and rejoicing in themselves and huh, delighting in themselves. Oh, we're so wonderful. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor that they're so wonderful. <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I like the advertisement, Pinocchio would not make a good motivational speaker. Because every time he'd say something, his nose get longer, and everybody would know that he's lying. And in some respects, it wouldn't make a good preacher. And I say that cautiously. Because people be rejoicing in themselves, delighting in themselves, boasting in themselves. No, 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 no. It's time for you to deny yourself. It's time for you to recognize you need to radically change. It's time for the Church of America to recognize, wait a minute, we need to radically change here. It's time for us to stop delighting in ourselves and saying how good we are and how well we've done. If we've done so good and we've done so well, this whole nation would be burning with the fire of revival instead of being in jeopardy. The nations of the earth would be too. 
but the reality of it is. When, when, see, 1922, oh, 1922, huh, 2002, I was with, um, I was with the president of Voice for the Martyr because Voice for the Martyr hosted me to do a conference for pastors in Alexandria, Egypt. And the person I was with is a guy who's just, his thing's church statistics. So I said, so how, many, how much money is America putting in the world missions now? What's the total decline since 10 years ago? What's the total decline since 20 years ago? How many missionaries in America, in, uh, is the United States of America sent to the foreign field? What's the decline over the past decade? What's the decline over the past 20 years? He's just spouting it out, just, just total decline. Who's now sending more missionaries than any other nation of the earth? Who's putting more money into the kingdom? Than and you know, I'm just like, wait a minute, man. We've got to have revival. We've got to have a move of God. People are just doing it. You know, it's just like, get rich and be happy in Jesus. Kind of thing. No, no. God's going to make wealth. It's, going to, it's wealth for us to go pour out upon the lost. The Lord told us true and undefiled, unspotted religions take care of the orphans and to take care of the widows. And he's told us to take care of the orphans. He told us to take care of the widows. He's told us to take care of traveling ministry. He told us to take care of his house, his church. Huh? He told us to take care of the poor. Five departments. Well, my goodness, that's a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of finances. Well, he's going to resource us if we do it. Yeah, he is. Watch what happens. We've laid the foundation, we've laid the foundation to bring, promote orphans out of Holy Ghost orphanages that were raised in Holy Ghost orphanages within the network of those who God has brought us together with, to bring them into the United States of America, to train them, to give them the best degree that they could get in the United States of America under the academic supervision of the University of Oregon, to send them back to the mission field. To their own nation and when we go and it's going to come past and I might be dragging some logs around right now and digging some ditches but you watch why it happens I might be just digging some ditches but father's gonna fill it with water father's gonna fill it with water and in whatever ditch you're willing to dig he's gonna fill it with water and those of you that are participating with us and in, in, in just coming here and being in the meeting there's a lot of people not here today my heart goes out to them I hope that what they're doing is really that important. I hope that they truly aren't here because they are following Jesus somewhere. But I'm telling you, those of you who are here and those of you who, who are going to set your hand to the plow and not look back, you're not going to be disappointed now. You're not going to be disappointed. Say to say yeah. Satan had come with all of his lies and propaganda and slander against God's word and God's truth and you. Don't listen to it. Father's rewarder, those who diligently seek him. Father's rewarder of, the, of those who have one desire, one desire. I, just, I want to do thy will, O oh God. I want to read a verse of scripture to you. It scares a lot of people. It doesn't scare me because I'm willing and obedient. It doesn't scare me because I know it's God that works in me to do it and to will it. I know that this is his work of grace in my life. All I've got to do is desire it and he'll work it. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a great thing that God's done? Say, all I've got to do is desire it. All I've got to do is desire it. And Father, do the work. But there's one thing God can't do, and that's get you up off your couch. So when you say that, you've got to make sure that you do say that in this context. Jesus said this in Mark, Mark, Mark chapter 8. And um, starting in, in verse 31, where he, as I said, described that he was going to be rejected. And then has to deal with Peter's own purpose and ideas for his life. And then he basically equates Satan to a man speaking after his own thoughts. Can you see that? 
in verse 33? He said, get behind me, Satan. He says to Peter, huh? What you're saying are the things that men think. That's the way that you're thinking like a man, like a mere man. That's the way man thinks. Great breakthrough in our life is when we can identify when we're thinking as a man. And when we're moving according to the revelation of the Holy Ghost, thinking after the thoughts and mind of Christ. Great breakthrough. Because for a long, long time in people's lives, they can't discern the difference. It's muddled. And when he had called the people unto him, it's like he calls to the sheep, come. With his disciples, he said this. He's calling them, come to me. Come. I'm driving this way. Come. Come on in. Empowering us. He says this. Whosoever will come after me, here's what you got to do. You want to come after me? In other words, you want to do the works that I'm doing? You want to be a part of this great signs and wonders, this kingdom that you know about and that you've been witnessing as you've watched the dead being raised to life again, the multitudes be fed, the elements, the winds in the way being subject to the voice of the one whom the Lord sent. This is, all, this is how it works. Here's how it works. You want to step into this heavenly life? You want to step into this great plan and purpose that God has for you? Deny yourself. Say no more to you. Deny yourself. What does that mean? My own ability. Abraham tried to bring to pass God's promise out of himself. And so an Ishmael came. It wasn't by the power of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't by him just waiting on God and being faithful. And my goodness, Abraham wasn't sitting at home in, in Babylon. Are you with me? He's up moving. He's up risking everything. The father said, I will bring it to pass. I will bring it to pass. You follow me. You be faithful to me. And Isaac came. Laughter came. Joy came. The promise came. The provision came. This is what you've got to go through. This is the fiery trial of your faith that you've got to be willing to go through. And I'm praying that in the name of Jesus Christ that, you go, that you're not going to sit around here for years thinking things like men and, 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 and not being willing to respond to the Holy Ghost, but with total abandonment. Say, here am I, God. And with that total abandonment, saying, here I am, Lord, participating with everything that he's given you an opportunity to do and, and keeping a fiery desire fiery desire. I, oh, yeah, you know, I grabbed some coffee the other day. And it had been sitting around a while. I took a sip and said, hmm, it's not bad. It's lukewarm. It's not bad. I can tolerate it. It's lukewarm. But the Lord won't tolerate lukewarm fellowship. He won't. He'd rather be hot or cold. The cold, he can move on and draw them. The hot are in agreement with his will. That's fiery. That's a fiery passion. It's a fiery desire. Are you with me? I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the fire burning. Blast the parataya. Local suparo nepeya. Hala mangeste parati. Mongrunja she. I'm blamed doja. You come in here by the help of the grace of God, I'm going to throw a bunch of logs on your fire. Hallelujah. If you're smoking, we're going to pour, we're going to pour some, we're going to pour some oil of, of joy on you. Hallelujah. Manglasa tag. Light a match, if need be. So just receive right now. Hallelujah. Father's anointing you. He's giving you an ever-increasing anointing. He's giving you every increasing anointing to do those things that he's purposed for you to do. You say, what, do I, what can I do? Huh? One guy said, all I have is a stick. Look what God did with that. Huh? All I got is this stick. <laughs> but you got to deny yourself. Because you try to do it your way. Huh? <laughs> 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 
Sí, 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 I'm going to tell you something that's scary. Are you ready? Most people cannot recognize themselves. Ouch. They can't recognize themselves. It's a great spiritual breakthrough when you can identify what is of self and what is of the spirit of the living God. It's the beginning of the knowledge of the Lord. It's the beginning of how now you can move in faith. It has to start here. It has to start here. You want to do what I'm doing? You want to walk like I walk? You want to have this inheritance? I've made you heirs and co-inheritors, co-inheritors with me. You want to have this? That's why not many mighty are called, not many wise, not many skilled, base people, weak people. People don't know nothing. Ignorant fish, ignorant fishermen. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. They don't have to work through this whole, you know, gamish of trying to, you know, let go of their own ideas because it's ignorant fishermen. Tell me what to do because I don't know what to do here. You can work with a person like that. The person, I get over it. That's not the right way to do it. You can, you know, come on. There's no moving forward. I'm just about done. That's the second close. <laughs> Or was that the first one? I guess first close. <laughs> Jesus said, you want to follow me? You want to come with me? Do you want to come with me? Jesus stood here right now looking at you saying, do you want to come with me? Everybody would be going, yeah, absolutely. He says, okay. You must deny yourself. You may come with me. I'll take you into the realms of glory. I'll take you into the places that you cannot even begin to imagine. The good things, the wonderful things that I'll do through your life. But you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross in order to be able to follow me. And he's going to make it real, he's going to make it real specific. He's going to say this. For who will whosoever will hold on to his life or live for himself or his own interest or purpose or for the self-preservation of their own interest. Whosoever shall save his life, do it his own way, shall lose it, shall lose it, shall lose it. See, when we talk about, when we minister this kind of abandonment to God, many people are offended and insulted and they cannot understand why we preach what we preach, the passion, what we preach with, the purpose, because it's all about this. It's identifying where it is that you've got to lose your life to start living for him. And people, that's change, that's growth, that's maturity, that you cannot do it, continue to do it the way you're doing it, huh? Until we step into all the fullness of the measure of his maturity, of his ministry. Hmm? That's it. Now you understand the power of it, the motive of it, the purpose of it. What's going on around here? Huh? Why it must be this way. It must be fiery. It must always have a, a very absolute light from darkness, truth from lying. Absolutism is something Satan hates. Culture hates it. The world hates it. But we, we live it. Amen. Whosoever will lose his life. Now, very specifically, here's the will of the Father. Here's taking up your cross and denying yourself. Here it is. For my sake and the gospel. For my sake and the gospel. Somebody said, oh, I'm just waiting to find out what the will of the Lord is for my life. For my sake and the gospel. Come follow me. Come do it just like I did it, like I sent this my disciples to go do it, like I raised up my church and instructed my church to do it. You and I have the complete manifestation of the will of the Father right here in our hands, the Bible.
For what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Well, what shall it profit a man if he's paid off his mortgage and loses his own soul? He pays off his mortgage, has a retirement plan, and a couple of world tours, sightseeing tours. At least the person that Jesus is talking about got the whole world. They had all the riches and all the wealth and all the prestige and all the power. I mean, they went big on their trade. Some folks trade their soul. They trade their inheritance and their life for a bowl of beans. Because their God is their belly. A bowl of beans. Esau sold out for a bowl of beans. But he wanted the inheritance. Can't have the inheritance without the birthright. Today I pray in Jesus' name that you'll let the call of God bring you to a place that you're willing to go anywhere, everywhere, lay down your life fully for the name of Jesus Christ and for the gospel. And with such a consecration, with such a commitment, there's nothing that you won't do for him now. There's no realm that you will not yield to him in now. There's nothing that you would not step out and risk now. And in so doing, God will be able to shape you, mold you, prepare you, empower you. And send you. Amen. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I pray that you value your soul today. I want you to know you do. Now you get to, you, your, your soul is a trading commodity. What you going to sell your soul for? To what price do you put it and value it at? What you going to do with your soul? God's asking you what you can do with your soul. It's a trading commodity. And then the Lord Jesus gets even that much more specific with it. Gets him that much more specific with it. Look at how specific he's going to get with this. Taking up your cross and following me. For my, for my sake and for the gospel. Look how specific he's going to get now. Ready? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me. Are you with me? Huh? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me in my words. His words. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm not ashamed of that. In my name you shall cast out devils. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. My words. These works shall you do and greater works. His words. To be a friend with the world is to be the enemy of God. His words. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. They that believe shall be saved, but they that do reject the gospel or do not believe should be damned. I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm not going to be ashamed of him or his words. He said, of course, the Lord used some pretty harsh words there. See, what we've made friendship with God calls adulterous and sinful think about the worst act of sin or think about the worst act that you can think of a violation against man uh, that you just hate it's just disgusting it's just terrible how can anybody be so evil think of it maybe you can think of one that just causes you to cringe at the thought of it there's such a violation against humanity that's the way Father feels about all sin, even the ones you like, maybe. The ones that you think are pleasurable. He feels that way about every one of them. He said, if you'd be ashamed of me in this adulteress, if you're ashamed of me in my glory, standing in front of these demon-possessed people, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his holy angels. I'm not, 
I'm not running that risk. You're not going to run that risk in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, you can't go, and I've, I've got to always draw people back into this because you start getting imaginative. The Lord says, no, 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 you ain't going, you can't go for me until you baptize with the Holy Ghost in fire. You can't go for me until you let the Holy Ghost do the work and not you. Huh? It's not your utterance, but everybody spake as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. I want everybody to stand with me. I want you to come back tonight. Because here in the context of the church, here in the context of the church, I don't want you to bring people with you. Because it's here in the context of the church, the glorious church, that Christ Jesus is empowering, strengthening, equipping. Listen to me. You listen to me. Because I know what I'm talking about. And I only know what I'm talking about because I'm repeating what Father said to Jesus and what Jesus said to us. It's been written down. You and I need to be perfected. And so he's placed gifts in the church to perfect us. Huh? And you get to, you get to, if you're in the military, they're going to perfect you for that skill. If you're in a workplace, they're going to perfect you for those skills. If you're in a school place, they're going to perfect you for whatever skill you're focused on. If you're in the church, God wants you to be perfected. That means you've got to fully cooperate. If you continue to, you know, if you're taking a test and you continue to write the answer that you believe that you should have given and not what the teacher said or not what the, you know, the administrator said or not what the general said or the person over you said, you're going to be kicked out or right? You're not going to pass or most, the goodness of God is not going to kick us out, right? Well, he does. The Lord will kick people out if, if they continue to go on in rebellion. The Lord hates divorce, okay? But there's one thing he hates worse than divorce. Are you ready? Are you ready? Rebellion. Are you with me? That's why he, that's why he gave that's why he wrote Israel a letter of divorcement and divorced Israel. And he put her away because of rebellion. Are you with me? Is everybody with me? You understand? That's not going to ever, we're never going to run the risk of that with a, just desiring to do his will. Today, the healing anointing of Jesus Christ is here for every single person. Everyone here, people that are watching me by way of web right now, or if you're watching this meeting on YouTube, I'm telling you right now, at this very moment, the healing anointing of the grace of God that is brought to us by the Holy Spirit is here to take you to a whole nother realm of knowing who He is and what He's purposed for your life. Listen, I'm talking to every one of you. Some of you have been held back by hurts. Some of you have been held back by ideas. Some of you have been held back by discouragement. Some of you have been held back because you're just overwhelmed. Just don't be healed back anymore. Some people say, well, what do I do? This is what you do. Cooperate. Participate. <laughs> so the Lord's placed in his ministry, in his church, that which would perfect you so that you can do a work of the ministry. But the perfection has to come before the work of the ministry. So I say, what do you mean by perfection? Skilling, being skilled being equipped are you gonna have to go through some pain let me just full disclosure here yes what's the pain your will self-interest letting go of your ideas how painful is that most painful <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I was so blessed the other night when Brother Joshua was here and I called. I called for the I called for those who were lost in the house that didn't know they were lost and they didn't respond. But then I called for everybody who wanted to give their life somewhere on a mission field was ready to go all the way for Jesus. And everybody in the house that belonged to the church here came forward. And I'm telling you, that that's it. That's all I'm interested really in. Okay? It's time we rise up and start going. Going everywhere, preaching the gospel. In the workplace. Today, in the, today where you go, wherever you go, preach the gospel. If you're sitting there arguing with your wife or your husband, you're not preaching the gospel. Huh? 
if you're if you're being affectionate and kind and sweet and there's a there's an expression on your face of peace and love and grace hallelujah, hallelujah. you're preaching the gospel then somebody might say wow you're a very happy family like a like you know like a waitress wow you're very happy yes because we're filled with the spirit of the living god and you know how we're filled with the spirit of the living god because Christ Jesus came and died and rose again for us and filled us with his life. Hallelujah. And you say it by the Holy Ghost and it strikes the hearts. You say it out of religion. You say it out of your own bank account of, of information. Psst, nothing. Dead. Dud. Dud. Huh? It's like lighting a stick of dynamite and throwing it and it just goes. Psst. Psst. Dud. And that's not too bad. Duds aren't too bad so long as it works in you of, oh my goodness, I need the anointing. <sighs> Jesus is calling every person in this place right now. He's calling every person in this place. Some of you, he's calling you back to living in the fire, to being on fire in the fire. But he's calling every person in this place to come stand in the fire, on fire in the fire. I counsel you to come buy gold on fire in the fire that you may have white raiment. Hallelujah. I'm calling everybody in this place right now. Everyone. He calls me every day. My being on, the, being on fire for God yesterday has nothing to do with today other than it results in me being on fire today. And the, you know, there's only one way to be on fire, and that's to be full of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit represents the fire of God and brings the fire of God. That's why Jesus said, I'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> Today, back then, if you had an offering that was holy and acceptable to God, he would, re he would re receive that offering and show that that offering was what he wanted by sending the fire. Fire always showed God's approval and acceptance of what was offered. Same thing today. That's why Peter said in Acts chapter 11, we know that God gives the Holy Ghost to those who, are obe who obey Him. It's time for Pentecost all over again. Believe me, I'm going to tell you right now, Pentecost become a religion as much as Methodism and anything else, other isms. It's time the Pentecost has to come back where people are baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And when you are, you're full of the love of God. You're full of the boldness of the Holy Ghost. You're full of everything that belongs to the realms of Jesus Christ. It isn't just sit around and, you know, you got some kind of expression of a language and saying you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. No, 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 no. It's far bigger than that. It's far bigger than that. Because I'm telling you right now, when it doesn't have all these things that Jesus Christ described and, and, and showed us, it's nothing but a sound of brass. It's disturbing and aggravating. It doesn't do anything for anybody. Oh, you listen to me. Oh, you listen to me. Harabata. See, the Lord speaks his word, and when he speaks his word, he tries our hearts. Because word is like a fire that burns, and it's, it's a revelation that unveils. And when there's things in our life, that are contrary to the will of God, we come under the influence of evil spirits, we come under the influence of opinions of men, we reject the word of God. We don't want it. It's offensive. We don't like it. His word tries us to see what sort we are. We're asking you today, what sort are you? What sort are you? They that hear us hear God. They that do not hear us do not hear God. What sort are you? I said, what sort are you? I said, what sort are you? I said, what sort are you? What sort are you? Just lift your hands towards heaven. If you're, if you're sick, be healed. If you're cold, be hot. If you're lukewarm, be on fire. Whatever disease or sickness or problem in your body, be healed right now. I don't care who you are, what you are, huh? If your arm's broke, just lift it up towards heaven right now. Be healed.
Say, Lord, Lord. I thank you for the healing right now. I thank you for the change right now. I thank you for the strength. The enabling ability to be different. To do it your ways. From this day forward. I'm yours. I'm going to have your opinion from now on. I'm going to take my opinion and shove it to the side. I'm going to have your opinion. Hallelujah. 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 Signs, wonders, miracles are here right now. Change, healing for you. Wherever you need healing, wherever you need change, it's here. Miracle power here right now. Places filled with the provision of heaven. Whatever you have need of. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're, we want you to participate with us now in an offering that represents the offering of yourself. It's got to be holy. It's got to be sacred. It's not that you don't have to do it. In other words, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do this. It's because your heart's in this. But I want you to listen to me. I want you to hear something. I mean, we're going to pour out everything we got. We, we're, we're inviting you to participate with us in this. We're not holding anything back. We're going to go, we're going to, you know, it's like they say out there, go big or go home kind of thing. We're going big. And that's right, because that's like, if we're not going to go big, let's go home, and home's heaven. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because, I mean, you know what? If we're not going to go big, we, what, 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 what value do we really have? It's time to go to home. Go ahead. Go be with the Lord Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to get, I'm going to stand around Christ Jesus one day and Thomas come tell me he did more than I did. <laughs> ah, everybody talking bad about Thomas. That's what, that's what happens to you when you live a doubtful and unbelieving life in any way. And I'm telling you, Thomas got over it. Because according to church tradition, he gave his life in India for the gospel. Hyderabad is calling. There's places in India have not heard, seen the power and the glory of God, and they, they, need, they have to have the power and the glory of God. They can't have our baggage, our problems, our issues. They need to see Jesus. And that's why Papa's going to anoint you with the Holy Ghost and fire and in a radical way. Get ready. Just get desiring. Papa, only your will. Only your will. Only your will, Lord. I know you will, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Everybody say this. We say, Lord Jesus. Make my heart so tender. So willing. So willing. So I can do it your way. What a miracle grace Father works when we just ask him. Thank you, Jesus. Come here. You know, things, situations in life will beat us up. But God, the Holy Ghost, to build us up. But it's a choice. It's a choice we make. You will not be sad or sorrowful about the past anymore. But you're going to be happy and blessed about the future. You're not going to live in condemnation. I tell you right now, I'll break the thing off of you. You're not going to live in disappointment. You're going to obey the pastor. Yeah. 
You're going to live an appointment, a divine appointment. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every harassing, tormenting thing. I break the power of it off of you. Every demonic assignment that's been against your life to try to destroy the call of God upon your life. It has no more ability to work its work against you. In Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled. Be filled. Just lift your hands towards heaven. I want you to lift them up there. Let God touch you. Lift them up a little higher. Lift, your, lift up your heart with your hands. Just now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of the living God, from this day forward, everything changes. Out of your belly flows these rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, this inexhaustible moving of His presence in your life. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' 